So we have six beakers here. What I need to do to get this set up, to get the red, is to put one or two drops of phenolphthalein in for the red, one drop in for the orange. Then I take my paranitrophenol, one drop for the orange, I put two drops in for the yellow. Then for the green, I need one drop of yellow and one drop of the blue, which is the thymolphthalein. And then I'll just put two drops of thymolphthalein for the blue, one drop in for the violet with one drop of the phenolphthalein. Once I get those all done, I put the tops back on the indicators and I can put those away. That's something that you want to prepare before you do the demo. The other preparation is to take your glycerin that has concentrated sulfuric acid in it and take your pickle jar and your students or whoever is watching this demo shouldn't see you set this up because then they're going to know there's something in the bottom. But if I put enough glycerin in here with the sulfuric acid, give it time to spread around, and just get it on the bottom, you won't be able to see that. Another part of the illusion that you saw was it appeared that we had 
the same substance going into each of these beakers during the demonstration, but that was just an illusion. In one picture, I have sulfuric acid with some alcohol and water, and I have the top of this labeled A for the acid. Then, the base, which is sodium hydroxide, I have that prepared, and I never know how much I'm going to have to use, so I prepare twice as much as what I think I'm going to use. So I prepared two liters, and all the instructions of how to prepare these solutions are available. And uh, that's really the setup here. I get this all ready to go, and then I put this back down here. And again, they're labeled so that I can see which one's the acid and which one's the base, but they appear to be the same. So that's how you get this demo set up. When adding the sodium hydroxide mixture the first time around, you want to tease the audience with the color first. See how the violet appears, but I didn't add enough of the base to reach the end point in this particular part of the titration. Then the second time around, I overshoot the end point and the color develops in the order of the rainbow. The red, then the orange, yellow, then some green, takes a little bit more for the green, blue. Now watch the violet here when the violet comes. It develops very quickly at first. Now I'm really overshooting the end point in this titration to show you what you do if you don't add enough acid in a few moments. Now, adding drops of the glycerin with the concentrated sulfuric acid will help to shift the equilibrium to the acid form, but not until I stir each of the mixture. I'm carefully counting out the drops, trying to predict how much of the acid it will take to shift to this point in the equilibrium. I use a glue stick when I'm stirring my mixture because it won't break the glass as I stir. But I didn't add enough of the acid to two of the beakers. The green is not changing. The blue is just there. Now watch here in the, in the violet. I'm going to have to fix the problem, open up the jar, add some more glycerin with the sulfuric acid, and stir it. And this will fix the problem. Now this demonstration is a fantastic way to introduce the topic of acid-based titrations and choosing the appropriate indicator. This titration involved a strong acid with a strong base, so any indicator with a pKa of around 7 will work. I hope you enjoyed the demo, and thanks for watching.